Hey everybody, I'm Jack Rita. I'm the designer of The Adventures of Conan, and in this video I wanted to go into a little more detail on some of the main action cards that are designed for solo mode. And we're going to take a look at the anatomy of a number of cards. These are the same ones that we did for the live playthrough video, and there's a link to that in the description. Um, so this is still a uh, work in progress in terms of finalizing the art, but this is pretty close to how the cards are going to look. So this little single player there is an indicator for solo mode. So these main action cards are exclusively for use with solo Conan. So we're going to look at a couple of these. Um, so the first thing that I want to point out, of course, I have the name of the card. Uh, it's going to have a, a, a number, uh, so it'll be 1 of 30 or 8 of 30. So there will be 30 of these in the base game. And uh, each expansion right now, the plan is that there will be 6 more that will be included in the Namidian Chronicles and the Queen of the Black Coast, um, as well as solo versions of all of the characters there as well. Um, but the first thing I want to point out is this indicator here has nothing to do with taking a wound. It's just uh, a shorthand for the difficulty level of this main action card. So this is a, uh, a one, so it is the easiest one. Um, this is an easy one as well. Here you can see this one is a times three. This is the difficult ones. That's also difficult. And then we have a couple of times. Well, we have one times two, so we had one. We had three of the easy, two of the hard, and one of the medium. So um, that's the first thing. So we'll go back to these here in a second. Um, so at the top of the card, you're going to have um, effects for the very beginning of this phase or ongoing effects. So that's going to be in this top section of the card. Um, so what we're looking at here is this is uh, whichever player is the first player, um, and it's always going to be one of the rivals. It's never going to be Conan as the first player, um, and that's always determined once again by the uh, by the event card. So this would say that's who your first player is. If this right here was the red one, it would go like this, and in solo mode. Uh, it means the ally is green for the ally, red for the foe. So whichever player is the first player, if after they roll their dice, they have a warrior, that's going to go right onto the encounter track right away. Uh, and that would block this first spot right there. Um, so in solo mode, if, if you don't have an effect that's on the main action card that is an immediate start of the round effect. That means that Conan technically can be the first player to put a die up here on this encounter track. Um, and usually you're going to want to put, if you're Conan, you're going to want to put a warrior, probably with your orange die, especially if you've rolled a double warrior. So this is a great die for Conan to put on there. But anytime Conan puts a die on this encounter track, it's going to trigger a reaction. Every action that Conan does is a reaction, and that just means in player order, if the rivals... Uh, have rolled any of these other symbols are going to put one of their dice up on that encounter track. And remember, in solo mode, only one die is necessary to unlock the encounter. So the encounters would be unlocked with the first die, and then it's just a matter of do any of these encounter cards, uh, are any of them going to be related to where Conan ends. So if he ends the, the phase in Aquilonia, which is a military kingdom, um, he'd have to fight the Hell Pack, because that's an any, and he'd have to fight the warriors as well. Um, so, uh, back to the card. So that's at the beginning. So that's an immediate effect. That's only going to happen right at the beginning of the phase. And then we have this other effect here, which is going to be ongoing. So this is just going to be, it's the uh, ally dice. Uh, this means that Conan can use the character result as if using one of Conan's own character results. But anytime he does that with an ally die, the ally will score one victory point. So uh, normally Conan can use allies dice for movement. Uh, anytime um, Conan will do a, a movement action with those dice, that's a, that's a free thing he can do, he or she. Of course, Conan's a guy, but if the player <laughs> is a she, uh, or they, whatever. And uh, But using the other dice is going to depend on the main action card. So Conan, the Conan player will not always be able to do that. But in this case, they can. It's one of the reasons why this is an easier one, because it's giving the Conan player more 
more dice to work with. Um, and then, of course, the matrix here, or the sort of the rubric that we have here, is on the left, it's going to be actions that Conan takes um, based on the symbol on the die, uh, or the symbol that it's, it's, it's being used. Um, in a case of a, this would be, you have to use a fate token to do this action. Um, and it's divided up by the two different rivals. So you have a foe reactions and you have ally reactions. So Conan does an action with his character die, with that character die, then you're going to check to see if either of these results, and this is the order uh, that you would do it in. So if the, if the foe has a warrior result, that die is going to go on the encounter track. And if they don't, you check to see if they have a sorcery result, and that will go on the encounter track. And that you will do that any time the Conan player uses a die for a deploy action or for uh, the plot, because they're using that die to do an action. You will do this if this is possible, and if the foe doesn't have these results, then there is no reaction. Uh, here, if Conan player uses a pirate uh, result, then you will spend, and this is a spent die for the foe, you would spend a movement to do this here, which is place a challenge token in every Savage Kingdom with the Thief attribute, which is not uh, a lot of kingdoms. Um, so it's uh, a <laughs> Tehran. Um, but remember that there's a second board with the Queen of the Black Coast expansion. So these are designed to potentially work with uh, those kingdoms as well. And then, of course, if Conan uses a, would have to use a fate token to change a die to a trade action. But when that happens, the uh, foe will spend one of these results, if possible, to score two victory points. And uh, to note that this symbol uh, is, if on one of the foes, uh, and we think we've got, oh, we don't have the cheat sheet here, but uh, on, if we take a look here, there we go, so... The red dice have the scry symbol, but not the kingdom symbol. And for the uh, black dice, it's the opposite. So this will account for whichever type of foe you're using. And then, of course, yeah, Conan does a move action with this symbol. Then you'll spend a character to move a challenge token towards Conan. Um, and that's always going to be the closest one, whichever one is closest to Conan. Um, here we have, this is any time Conan uh, does an action that moves the Conan player up on the achievement track. Um, so that's going to be thief, warrior, or pirate, and it'd have to be those symbols. So if they're using pirate, that's going to do a double, possibly a double reaction. And, uh, and again, you will go in player order, not necessarily in order on the card. So if the, if the ally is first, which would be the case on, in this round, because the ally would have the first player token, you would do the allies reaction first, which is they would spend a, a comparable die to move up on that um, achievement track, and then the foe would spend a movement to place a challenge token in every Savage Kingdom with a Thief attribute, uh, as, long as, as long as it doesn't already have a challenge token. And then here, and this is probably going to be changed to have a little slash there, just to be a little more uh, clear, but if Conan spends either one of these, the ally will spend a uh, sorcery to cycle a rogue encounter, and if there are none, add a challenge token to an Adventure Kingdom. So... The rogue encounter is any encounter that does not match one of these uh, adventures here. So um, all of these adventures, of course, uh, do match one of these encounters. So none of these are rogue. So in that case, you would uh, do the second part here, which is add a challenge token to an adventure kingdom. So and this would be done left to right. So you'd add an, uh, a challenge token to Nemedia. Uh, and if there was already one there, or if there was a, a character there, then you would do the one in Aquilonia. And if that was not possible, then you would do Shem. Um, and so, and then we have here at the bottom, this is the end of, this is not necessarily going to be the end of the phase, it's the end of the round. And it's just, uh, if, a, if either of these uh, rivals has an adventure card, their last adventure card, they will get the rewards on that card. So if they had one of them had this one, um, and in fact, if they both have one, in this case, they are both getting it. And again, it would be done in, in player order. They'd get these rewards. So if the ally had this one, they would advance on warrior or gain two gold. 
Um, and that would be, they would definitely advance on warrior. If that's not possible, then they would gain the two gold and then they would roll the military die. So that's how that works. Um, if we look at uh, this one, here we have, if the foe has rolled at least two warriors, then move them to Conan's location and immediately duel. So that is a one time at the beginning of the phase. Once everyone has rolled, you check to see if this is true. And if it is, then you, you do what happens. So this is one of the, one of the cards that is going to potentially have a duel happen. Um, same sort of stuff that we've seen before here. Uh, but at the bottom, we have here at the end of the phase, um, a, for every fate token a rival holds, they will score one victory point, and you do that in player order. Um, so this is a, a really hard one. Um, so it has no, there is no beginning of or ongoing effect here uh, for the phase. Um, but that's the only real good news here. Um, so one of the things that makes this one uh, uh, ex especially challenging is that if Conan does any character actions, it's going to trigger a skill contest. And it does not spend a die. You just do it. And the skill contest, uh, contest of course, is that Conan, and in this case the foe, would roll all of their available dice. And they're trying to, you're seeing who can roll the most of all of these symbols, movement, um, kingdom, and scry. And remember, uh, the kingdom and scry symbols, uh, each foe only has one of those. So, And of course, Conan's die has uh, both of them on one side, so it's a split <laughs> a split result. Um, but wilds count here as well. Uh, so if the, f and normally with a skill contest, uh, if the, the loser uh, has to spend all of their successful results, but in addition to that, the f if the foe wins, Conan loses all fate tokens and then moves to Samaria. Um, and moving to Samaria, that, that, that could be good, but most of the time it's, it's not gonna be good because you probably have moved away from Samaria on your way somewhere else. And this is each time this happens, you're going to do that. You're going to roll all the available dice. So it's going to constantly change up the pool of dice that the that both the foe and Conan have available. Um, and then there's just, there's a lot more results here um, and some other stuff. At the end of the phase, you're going to have this effect here. So anything that, that's listed on the card after the uh, rubrics here for the for rivals, is going to be an end of phase sort of thing. So here, the foe advances on the lowest achievement for each unspent die at the end of the main phase, um, and so that can be a big deal. And then the rivals will get two victory points for each challenge token that they have, and they will uh, score their last adventure if they have any at the end of the round. Um, so anything new on this one? Here you've got a situation where. Uh, Conan can earn the uh, earn a god token, specifically the bell token, by revealing a challenge token. Um, so at any point, this is at any point in that particular round in this main phase, um, they are incentivized to say, "All right, yeah, I'm going to go for it." And you know, you've got a way to place challenge tokens in an adventure kingdom, so it's a little bit more likely to happen. Um, and uh, some other shenanigans, but not that many. There's not that many reactions and so this is another reasons why this is a one one sword difficulty level uh not that many reactions from the ally and uh although that can have its own repercussions because remember these characters on one at least one side of their uh character thing they have these things that are triggered by having leftover dice and and to be clear um at the end of the phase um the first thing you do with any leftover dice is try to put them on the encounter track. So that's the first hurdle that Conan has to deal with is that uh, if Conan hasn't spent a lot of rival dice by doing actions, if they've got leftover dice, uh, they're going to do that. Uh, then you're going to check these effects here. So again, if, if Zillis has two or more leftover dice, um, then Conan loses a god token. Um, and here, nothing on this side of Valerius, but on the other side, um, it's going to cycle. If he, has, if he has two or more leftover dice, it's going to cycle all rogue encounters. So you may have thought as Conan, like, oh, great, you know, the, the encounter track is unlocked, but I've made it to a kingdom where there's no encounters, um, you know, maybe or just a hell pack. But in this case, you would cycle all both of these here because neither one of them would apply to Koth. Um, so, but now you've got a further thing here is, um, you know, you're going to have uh, other effects here. So um, on this one, though, the rivals are going to score 
one point for each face down challenge token on the map. So it's another reason why Conan might be like, uh, let's um, let's try to reveal s some of those so they're not face down. Um, this is another uh, level three, uh, very difficult one. So drain strength is, is tough because the first die that Conan uses to perform an action, you're going to put that die in here, which and it's going to be there for the rest of the round. This die is set aside. And if Conan uses or applies any symbol, you're this particular symbol. So let's say that Conan, you know, use this as their first action. That die is going to go here, and it's that symbol. So if Conan uses the warrior symbol for the rest of the round, um, the foe is going to score two victory points. Plus, Conan's out of this die. So um, if they were, like, spending this to move up on the warrior achievement track as their first action... Then they're gonna they're not gonna have this for encounters if those are unlocked and they usually are and they're not gonna have Conan's not gonna have that die to use for uh, rolling on adventures so that's that's the primary reason why this is a level three is that is a that's a it's like taking a wound um, but it's got more repercussions there um, and then not that many reactions here so that's pretty good but then you do have the uh, both characters can score the uh, rewards um so yeah so the big deal here is is that is losing that die and then this is a level two so the mounting pressure you've got this which we've seen this is if if the ally is the first player they'll advance at the beginning of the phase so that's that's a one-time thing conan attempts a two or higher point adventure um then the rivals will advance on warrior they get points for that only the foe would score an adventure so not the ally um, and then you've got a decent number of reactions here. So that's what makes this a level two. So there's 30 of these and, uh, there's going to be 10 of each difficulty level. And so, and the other thing that's going to happen, we don't have them on the cards yet, but each card and each side of each card is going to have some recommended, uh, main action cards. So it'll just be some numbers. So it'll be things like, all right, uh, one, five and, uh, 11 for this particular side of Zillis. Um, and part of that is uh, creating synergy with what Zillis's unique abilities are or the number of dice that they have. And so uh, you ideally what you do is when you've picked your your rivals, you're like, all right, we're going to use uh, the dark green side of Valerius and uh, the gray side of Zillis. Uh, and those are going to have recommended uh, main action cards. So we'll find those cards. And that will be our six cards. Now, sometimes you're going to have a situation where, like, uh, Valerius's dark green side is use uh, main action card number 10, and so is uh, Zillis. And so you'd only have uh, five because they've got one in common. Um, and then what you can just do is uh, fill that out with a, a random card, or you can choose a specific card. And these are, by and large, you're going to get a mix of one of each difficulty level on these recommendations. So... Your six cards, uh, if you're using the recommended main actions, then you're going to have two easy, two medium, and two difficult in there. Shuffle them up, and uh, six is the number that you're going to have. Uh, and you might not, you know, the game could be triggered before you even get through all six of these, but if it hasn't been triggered by the plot or by the achievement track, then it's just going to be at the end of the sixth round will be the uh, trigger for the end of the solo game. Um, and then, yeah, we're working on a cheat sheet here of all of the different, uh, these are the challenge tokens for solo mode, although they can be used in regular mode. And, and these, by and large, can be used in solo as well. Um, you meant a slight adjustment with, like, ambush, because there's, like, a, a choice that the foes would make. So if you don't uh, mind making that decision on their behalf for uh, as Conan, um, but, yeah, you can use these as well in, uh, in the regular game. Same thing with the plots. These are all solo plot cards. Um, they're especially good for solo mode, but they can be used with other ending again. As you can see, we're using one from each of the five different plots. Um, but they all have their own different uh, nuances and types of effects, uh, but you can also mix in the ones from the base game. So um, that's what we're uh, looking at here. Uh, so if you have any other questions about how these main action cards will work, um, there will be a set of solo rules 
um, that will ref- it'll say, you know, refer to the main rules for, for a lot of it. Um, but these solo rules will explain what is different uh, phase to phase. And then a big portion of it is just understanding how to use these cards because there are some shorthands like this, this achievement thing. It was just easier to just use a symbol and then explain what that does in the rules. And that's going to be true with a lot of these symbols on here so you'll get used to that um and then you'll be able to like oh yeah i understand how this works and so uh that's it if you have any questions or comments uh let me know in uh, in the comments and uh, i'll be happy to answer those that's it for this one everyone thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon